As you meditate, you have to be alert to two things, what you're doing and the results of what you're doing. Like right now, you're focusing on the breath. And what results are you getting? In the beginning, it doesn't seem like much. But the important point is that you're patient, because there are a lot of things in this world that grow gradually. And one of them is peace of mind. If you're impatient, it gets right in the way of your peace of mind. Now, this doesn't mean that you're lazy or lackadaisical in the meditation. It's simply that you just keep at it, keep at it, keep at it. As John Fuhr once said, meditation is a little thing. It becomes big because you do it continuously. Just keep the mind with the breath. Try to make the focus of the, the mind just right. In other words, not too heavy, not too light. If it's too heavy, it's like holding a chick in your hand and you squeeze it so hard that it dies. If it's too light, you're holding the chick so loosely that it flies away. So try to figure out exactly how much pressure do you have to put on the breath in order to keep your awareness there. And one of the reasons we talk about allowing whatever pleasant sensations there are come from the breath to spread through the body, is that if you hold them in a very tight area, after all, even the pleasure gets unpleasant. It gets heavy, constricted, confined. So think of your awareness as being like a, a radiant light. It's focused on one spot in the body, and everything spreads away from that one spot. And for the time being, you don't have to Go tracing out every little light beam that comes out of your awareness. You don't have to go running after it. Just think that you're right here and your awareness is radiating out of right here. Just try to make the point of right here as comfortable as possible. Then leave it at that. All too often we want the mind to go here or go there or go to this stage or that stage, and the more we try to push it, the worse it gets. There's the story they tell of the foolish and experienced cow who has grass and water on the hillside, but she sees grass and water on another hillside, and she wonders, well, what's that grass like? What's that water like? Let's go check it out. But because she's foolish and inexperienced, she doesn't know how to get from this hillside over to the next. She gets down in the ravine, and then she gets stuck. And she can't get back to the place where she originally was, much less get to the other hillside. So the trick here is to stay where you are. And if it's going to develop, it's going to develop on, on its own. You can't map out the way the the practice is going to go, because all of your preconceived notions about the practice come out of ignorance. You simply have to do the causes, and the effects will happen on their own. When the causes are properly done, the effects will come. There's no doubt about that. The problem is our impatience that wants them to come fast, especially if they've come fast in the past before, we want them to come fast again. But remember, we're here to learn about causality, and one of the ways you learn about causality is to simply put in the causal factors and see what comes out as a result. And if what you're learning is that the mind needs some time to calm down, you learn an important lesson. Just make sure that you keep at the breath. Try to get on good terms with the breath. Don't Regard the meditation object as your enemy, or as something to be conquered. Think of it as something you want to live comfortably with. You want to be friends.
to keep chipping away, chipping away, chipping away, and make adjustments here and there so that the ple present moment is pleasant enough and it may not be rapturous or have any bells or whistles or lights flashing. But maybe it's saving its bells and whistles and lights for later on. Because the thing about pleasure is that if you allow it to stay just pleasant enough, after all it begins to grow and grow and grow. Not because you pushed it, but because you've given it space. So you notice the mind tends to be in two modes. There's the producing mode and there's the consuming mode. And the consuming one is the really demanding one. It demands pleasure right now. And the producer tends to be a little bit lazy, so I like to put in some effort and then get over to the consuming. But as you meditate, you've got to learn how to stick with the producer. And check every now and then to make sure that things are at least pleasant. may not be overwhelming, but at least they feel good. Oh, they feel okay. That's to make sure that the producer isn't going overboard. And otherwise, just stay with the producing continuously, because it's the continuity that's going to make all the difference. It's like planting a seed. If you gave it five minutes of sunlight and five, just a little bit of water and then otherwise abandon it, it wouldn't grow. The sunlight and the water have to be regular. They have to keep coming back and back and back. Just like putting a cream on a rash. You don't put the cream on and then wipe it off. You put it on and then you leave it there. And it's the cream interacting with the skin over time that's going to cure the rash. So keep the mind with the breath continuously, and then let it do its work. The mind does the work on the breath, the breath does the work on the mind. And bit by bit by bit, the, the sense of ease, the sense of pleasure grows. And even when it gets large and intense, you can't abandon that producing mode. The ease will nourish the body on its own without you having to turn into the lazy consumer. Just think of it spreading, spreading, but you're here producing, producing, producing it, so that you don't run out. And that's how the meditation will begin to make a difference in the mind.